Welcome to the Dusty Jobs Podcast from Imperial Systems. Industry knowledge to make your job easier and safer. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Dusty Jobs Podcast. Uh, today joining us is Lori Stainbrook and she's from the Mercer County Career and Technical Center. How are you doing today? Great, great. Good. How are you? Great. Uh, we were talking before this, and your career title or your your job title is so long. I just figured I'd let you introduce it yourself. <laughs> what what are you what are you doing there again? I'm the cooperative education coordinator here at the uh, Mercer County Career Center. Okay, and that means what what are you what are you doing? Are you so doing? essentially, what I do is the students that are in their shops, they're learning their skills. And usually by their senior year, they're prime and they're ready to go out and find work. Right. So we get them in and we address the soft skills. Mm -hmm. We get their resume together, their cover letter, and we put it out there and find them a job. Sometimes they find their own job. And yeah. um, so we, what I do is I just transition them into the workforce, essentially. Uh, so you're taking them from... They've been learning these skills the whole time uh, while they're at the career center, and mm-hmm. then you help them actually get out there into the real world, the Correct. real working world. So it's that step, that, that first step possibly into some of these first adult careers, huh? Correct. And Correct. you're, you're right. helping them with that. That's that's yeah. great. That's such yeah. a, Now, how long have you been doing that? One year. One year? <laughs> Yeah. I, did, I did a part-time uh-huh. um, the year prior to, and of course we had COVID last year, so right. it was uh, kind of an interesting year, but we got about 40 students out in spite of, nice. of it being COVID, yeah. But you've been with the school for longer than that, haven't you? I have, now, yes. How long have you been with the school? Probably, it's been 24 years. Oh my goodness. 24 years. So you have a ton of experience with uh, helping out with kids, learning trades, and and things like that, right? Well, mainly healthcare. So I'm at uh, RN by trade. Oh, gotcha. So I started teaching with the LPN program, which is the adult um, nursing program, licensed practical nursing. Yeah. Um, that was part time, and then I started with the high school students in '97. Uh huh. And so that's the health careers program. Right. And it prepares them for really any career in the healthcare field. Uh, they get their nurse aid. They get a bunch of healthcare certs so they can uh, hit the ground running and get into health care. Right. Yeah, well, that's that's great stuff, too. I mean, we need more nurses every day. Mm-hmm. So Indeed. Yeah. So over the last 20 years, mm-hmm. so uh, I don't know, I, I feel like there's been a little bit of a shift in the mentality of how people look at trade. Mm-hmm. So if you would go back 20 years when you started doing this, mm-hmm. what, what do you think the mentality was back then or how people looked at, at trades? Do you, do you think it's different than today or do you think it's... Well, I'll I think, let you speak I, think to that. I think it's definitely changed. Um, I did a, lo- a lot of um, PR work for my program, mm-hmm. so I would go into the high schools and I would talk about health care, and there are varying um, levels of health care. So you can get out and essentially, um, you know, have no education and be working in health care. You can get a two-year degree. You can get a four-year degree. Right. So. Um, uh, the career center was kind of a hard sell because most of the counselors at that time were under the impression, well, most students, they need to go to four years of college right. to be able to come out and be successful in really any field. Right. Um, and, you know, the healthcare field for sure. So um, nowadays I'm seeing um, that uh, counselors are a little more open. Uh, to students maybe coming to the Career Center and either even higher level academic students. Um, My daughter in fact was um, she started at Penn State Barron in engineering and decided to come to the precision metal program her senior year just to get some hands-on experience. Right. So um, she did that and you know was very successful and then was able to do an internship uh, the last two months of her senior year, which really kind of opened up, you know, employment, and she was able to get some hands-on experience as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's something you typically won't find in a in a standard education setting is that you know this hands-on experience mm-hmm, where you mm-hmm. get internships and you can get uh, placements, and and we have some students here that have been, come from Mercer right. uh, County Career Center, and and now they're. They're working with us, and they came through that same process where they started in, and and uh, now they're they're actually working for us. But we can get to that in a minute. Okay. So, uh, so I I also felt that way. Like back in the '90s, maybe there was a 
maybe a little bit of a people looking down their nose at some a, traits. A stigma, sure. There was a stigma about sure. it. And, yeah. um, and I think our culture has seen a shift mm-hmm. in which um, trade jobs, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't think they're a low-paying job anymore. I think, they're, no. I think you make a good living at it these days. And um, I think it's become a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know, a, a feel of people who are able to accomplish things with their skill and with mm-hmm. their own hands mm-hmm. is... Mm-hmm. Looked, looked upon in a little bit of a higher light than uh, than it used to be. Most definitely. And then you get out there and you're an entrepreneur, you start your own business. I mean, those are the people that are successful in right. this day and age. And so. you can do it when you go to a, a school like yours. You can do it with little to no debt mm-hmm. because it, of exactly because of the ability to uh, start right out of high school. Exactly. With an education that's provided by, by the county. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but okay. So that's where we were. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where we are. Is mm-hmm. I mean, am I am I summing this up pretty good? I mean, mm-hmm. you can speak more to it if uh, if I'm missing anything. Well, definitely. I I think, and the counselors are the gatekeepers um, for our you know population at the career center. So, um, I think they're uh, you know a little more open to the fact that there's a successful level for with students that come to the career center right I mean you know we we are replacing them in jobs they're making a good living Um, you know the hours are good and like I said they're able to go on and possibly form their own business yeah so they can become very successful so that's kind of this where we're at right now with the trades where do you you know, as someone who's seeing, and you guys probably have a lot of knowledge on this, where do you think the trades are going to go in the future? Do you, do you see them slipping backwards? What What do you think the future of trades is going to be? Well, college is expensive. It really is. And um, there is a definite need for people to be working in the trades. So, um, you know, the jobs are there. Uh, we need to fill them. So I think it's really important that we train and, uh, you know, that's where the jobs are. That's where the money is. So yeah. that's where I think you guys still seeing a real uptick in, in uh, job openings for things like. Well, I mean, we have welders here in, in that. Yeah, we we couldn't fill uh, the job openings. I have a, I a hiring board at uh, the school, and you know we don't have enough students that were career ready to fill those positions. Yeah, more job. Let, let me get this right. You have more jobs right now mm-hmm. than students that are able to fill them. Correct. Mm-hmm. That's so. I mean, that's great. Mm-hmm. So a student could come, come to the school, mm-hmm. learn how to do a skill, mm-hmm. come straight out of high school, and you guys would move them directly into a job. Most definitely. Now there are a lot of jobs that have a pre-apprenticeship programs, right. whereby those um, employers would, you know, continue their training on. But yeah, a lot of them are they're career ready. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's great. That I mean, that's great in this day and age that you can move right out of high school and right into a, a good paying good, job good too. paying job right. yeah so i know i know uh, a lot of welders can get into a shop where they have not only you know good pay mm-hmm. possibly full benefits mm-hmm. 401k right. mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of those opportunities out there mm-hmm. and i think it's great that you guys are able to help mm-hmm. and uh, get people on that path very early in life so it's rewarding yeah it really is yeah yeah I enjoy it do you think now? Do you are you guys seeing anything with uh, robotics or automation? Do you think that's going to affect anything uh, in the future? Possibly. Um, you know, uh, we have people getting injured on the job. You know, you have back injuries, repetitive motion injuries. So, yeah. and uh, technology's come a long way. So I'm sure. Uh, you know, they, we may have robots to fill some of those repetitive nature type of positions. That's true, yeah. But, uh, you know, we have to have somebody maybe to run that. So uh, we do have two computer programming, um, uh, and the one's new uh, at the Career Center. So. so you guys are even on board with getting people ready for that line Correct. of work. Correct. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I know uh, if you go back to one of our previous episodes, we talked to a gentleman named Paul, and uh, he, he actually does robotic uh, welding so he handles okay. that so you go back and listen to that episode at some point if you haven't heard it out there and um, he talked about how even though you have someone who's running that welding robot mm-hmm. you still need a welder who knows what that weld is mm-hmm. supposed to look like mm-hmm. they they might be there supervising a robot or checking on that robot but that that person still needs to know what a weld is supposed to look like what mm-hmm. it's supposed to do so I think we're gonna see uh, some of these welders Mm-hmm. transition into supervising possibly two 
welding robots where they know what that weld's supposed to be like because they've right. done it themselves and they have that knowledge and experience. Sure, sure. You have to so, have that background and exactly. then you can move into the higher tech positions. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So so we've worked with you guys on a couple uh, people who have come and worked for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, so what's that been like? Tell me what it's been like working with Imperial on uh, getting some students into well, the career field. Well, I have to say you guys were, you know, you are great as far as getting the students, uh, you know, uh, in here. Uh, I had a student, she was a female welder. And so I called up and I said, hey, you know, she's ready to come out. and. Uh, and you guys were really gracious, you know, that you made the transition really easy. You mm -hmm. made my job easy. So <laughs> that good. was that was uh, the good part. Uh, but she was a little intimidated to come out into the workforce. And yeah. she was actually thinking about continuing her welding education after the Career Center. So uh, the counselor and I, we sat down and, we, and even the welding instructor said, you're ready. You, you need to go out. So. Uh, she started here, and I guess she's doing great things. Yeah, yeah. I think so. uh, I think she's uh, fit in real well yeah. in the shop, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of uh, people who are uh, older older guys in the shop who've been welding for a long time mm -hmm. that they've really uh, not only her but the other people from the career center that have mm -hmm. come in. They they take these young people and they. I think they have an appreciation for them coming in. They uh -huh. pull them under their wing, and they mm -hmm. want to make sure that they're they're doing a good job because it's something they've been doing their whole life. And uh, I think they want the next generation to appreciate it as much as they have. So, and and that's what it takes, and that's so important. You know, you just get you got to train them, and and because those people will be retiring, and then we you know we need a whole new um, crew. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's what you guys are doing. Yeah, helping get that next generation yeah. ready. Yeah, to keep things keep keep America moving. That's right. Uh, make it so we can still build things in America, yeah. so we can produce stuff here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need the people to be able to do that with the knowledge and skills. And Definitely. That's what you guys are doing out there at the Career Center. All right. Yeah. So um, is there anything else you want to share? Anything else you want to talk about at the about the Career Center? Well, there are uh, 14 other programs. And uh, so, you know, any student that are they're thinking, they're on the fence as far as a career, uh, come visit us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're, like I said, we have uh, a range of different programs. We have uh, the soft skills, and then we have called the heavy shop with automotive, diesel, welding, et cetera, uh, entrepreneurial. So it's a great way to uh, explore different careers and uh, just kind of get your feet wet, and maybe, it, you know, it'll branch out into something permanent. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. our hope. That's yeah. our hope. Lord, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate uh, you sharing your time and, and information with us about the Career Center and just how students can get involved and uh, how you guys are helping, you know, shape the future of a lot of uh, working class Americans to get them on the right track to making a good living and helping build our country up. So thank you for supporting us as well. Yeah, we, we really appreciate having you in the community. Now we have joined us uh, Avery Lockwood. How are you doing today, Avery? Pretty good. How about you? Good. Good. Thanks for asking. Um, so you actually are now working at Imperial, but you started at the Career Center, correct? Mercer yeah. County Career Center. Um, I went there for two years, and I loved it there, and I didn't know if I wanted to go into more schooling. And since I've been at Imperial for two months, um, I started doing co-op because, like, my welding instructor – knew I had it in me just to go straight into work yeah. instead of going on the more school. Now co-op, that's that's when you are still in school but they let you come to work for a little bit, is that right? Yeah, that's when I go to like my home school for the beginning of the day or even like in the afternoon, whichever how the school does it. Uh -huh. And then I would go to work for the other half of the day. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Now do you feel that really helps you uh, gain some confidence in being able to move into the working It definitely world? helped me because I got comfortable here before I started here full time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I could have like kind of gone anywhere with it and then come here, right. but I'm glad that I stayed here. So I was like comfortable with the people. I knew who the people were and like that kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, so what's your experience been like so far here at Imperial? How do you like it? It's pretty good. Definitely getting used to some of the stuff that I've never done before, like driving the forklift, even the cranes. Uh -huh. I mean, they're simple stuff, but still stuff that I was never taught. So yeah, I enjoy that. So, so who's teaching you that here? 
kind of pretty much like everybody. I mean, all the guys are extremely helpful. Um, anytime I can go up to any any of them, and they're extremely like support, even supportive. I know how many times the guys just ask me like, "What got you into welding? Like, uh-huh. you're a girl. Like, what got you into it?" Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. It was just really anything. I just love getting my hands dirty and having fun with it. Well, did, I mean, is that it? Did you know somebody else who was a welder or did you just decide this all on your own? Like, I want, this is something I want to do. Um, I actually had a buddy of mine. We, my, and my family have a pulling truck and so does his family friend. Uh-huh. And he's just like, Hey, I got to fix some stuff. You want to come try it out? Yeah. Cause at that time, like three years ago, I had absolutely no clue what I wanted to do. Yeah. My older sister was going into nursing school. My family kind of wanted to push me to go into more school, but I still had like absolutely no clue. So I'm like, give it a try. Right. So I went and well with some stuff up for him on his pulling truck. And he's just like, you actually got a pretty good knack for that. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's my skill. So yeah. that's just what I started to pursue. And so far you've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah. So, um, so what all have they, they put you doing here at Imperial? What are the, what are the welding tasks you've been given? Um, a lot of like different positions and how like how to weld that like normally like Votech, it's like just the same stuff. Uh-huh. And like at Votech, you just did like a little plate of whatever. And right. then here it's just like absolutely everything i mean like i've done stock work i've done like actually stuff that is going to be like shipped out like all that other stuff so yeah i've been enjoying it how do you like that how do you like actually seeing something turn into to something and that's probably pretty that's, cool huh? that's something i've definitely like seen myself be proud of because yeah. i've never like had to build anything and it go somewhere else it's always just like oh you cut a piece and then you just throw it away right so right. seeing something like actually be put into something else and then it working out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think it's neat. I mean, I, I, I'm not in your guys' apartment. I don't, I don't do the welding and fabricating, but for me, I, I think it's great that we're building something that helps not only, um, keep people safer, but keep people healthier. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just really cool to see those go out the door, see our equipment go out the door and know that it's going to another place where it's going to improve people's lives. It's not just the next cool thing that someone's going to have or it's going to wear out, but it's it's actually a, a safety thing that helps people feel uh, going to be better, you know what I mean, and, and help other people who are welders and other people that are uh, in the trades that it's going to, you know, make their lives better and have them be healthy when they go home to their families at night. So um, I really appreciate what you guys do out there, and I think uh, everybody out in the shop, including yourself, is – just puts out a really great quality product. So uh, we're super glad to have you on our team. And, uh, you know, if you have anything else you want to say to anybody who's listening out there who's thinking about getting into welding or thinking about maybe going to the Mercer Career Center? Just do it. Just do it? If it's something that you want to do and even, like, don't even have any, like, slight of interest or, like, anything before that mm-hmm. or, like, experience, just try it out. I mean, the Career Center, you don't have to pay for anything. It's not like schooling that you'd have to go on for two more years, but just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Well, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Dusty Jobs Podcast. Today, we have uh, Grant Gilhausen from the Mercer County Career Center with us today. Uh, how you doing, Grant? Good. Good. So what's your uh, what's your role over there at the Career Center? I'm the uh, lead welding instructor at nice. the Career Center. Nice. So uh, how long have you been over there doing that? I just finished my eighth year, and this upcoming school year will be my ninth started. So. Wow. So you got a little bit of experience. A little bit, yep. Trading these uh, young kids up in the in the trades. I try to do my best. There you go. There you go. Well, we know you're doing a good job because we got a couple of them in the shop here, and they're, they're doing a great job. But you haven't always been in over at the school, though, right? Did you go to the school prior to uh, teaching there? or No, I actually graduated from Franklin High School in, okay. ben- in Venango County. So I went to Venango County Botech for uh-huh. welding there. Oh, I gotcha. And then, and then you moved into actually welding for a bit, right? Right. The day after graduation, I started in the trades. Right started, into it. Right into it. No, didn't have to do any job search or nothing. It got you right into it. Yep. That's, that's interesting how that happens when you go to the trades. Sometimes you can start right out of high school, start making money, right? Yep. And a good job. Yeah. So, yeah. so how long were you there? Um, I started at Wither Upper Erection and Fabrication, and I was there for probably six months or so and got laid off. Went to another tank company, was there for another six months or so, got laid off. So I knew I had to get something a little bit more stable. So I went to work at Joy Mining Machinery in Franklin. 
Yeah. And I was there for five and a half years until I started teaching. Nice. So that's, I got to imagine that time actually being out in the field, being at a couple locations, uh, actually welding has to come into a huge part of uh, being able to teach these young kids what it's actually like out there in the real world. Huh? It is. It's, it's nice to be able to tell them, you know, if they're doing something, I said, you know, th this isn't going to fly in the, in the real world, in a real shop. I said, those guys are going to eat you up if you act like you are. So <laughs> um, that, that's one thing you can actually tell them, you know, that's not going to work in the real world. Um, you really got to have your head screwed on straight. Um, safety, horseplay, none of that will ever fly. Um, as well as learning the little tricks and the little trade secrets from the older guys that have been there for years on on years so. yeah yeah but that's interesting I, I you know you're not just uh it's a good point you're not just teaching these young people about uh the skills that they're going to need but it's about you know how to be safe in an environment how to um, interact with others in an environment because in a shop it's not just you you're usually working with a team or, or other people right right and uh that's that's almost as much of a skill as actually welding right you have to be able to communicate and work well with others because I, I tell them all the time, I said, those old boys in the shop or, or women, they're going to take you under their wing if they like it. And they're going to show you everything they know. Yeah. And if you don't do that, those guys can make you look real bad real quick. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's great to know that, you know, if you go to Mercer County career center, you're not just going to learn about welding, but you're going to learn how to social interaction in the shop. Cause that's right. Soft skills, soft skills, a lot of soft skills in there too. Hey, I, that's a, that's a new term for me. I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to tell my kids at home, they got to learn some soft skills. Right. So, uh, but that's great. So coming from working in the trades to where it is now, like, you know, you started probably around 2007 working yes. in the trades Yeah. and now it's, you know, 2021. What, how have you seen the transition from maybe the mentality of how people looked at the trades or how um, that interaction with what it meant to be a welder then and what it means to be one now? I mean, what, what's your been your journey through that process? Um, even from whenever I was in school, like if you went to Votech, you weren't one of the smart kids. And the people that stayed at school, home school, they were the ones that were going to college, going to make all the money. But it, it's still the same mentality these days. But What's funny is in the long run, those people that don't go to Votech that stay for their core classes and that they, uh, they're usually the ones looking for a job and they're how many thousands of dollars in debt. Right. And if you go to the Votech or a trade school like that, you can go right into work and start making your money. So, I mean, there's always that mentality of the people that are staying at home school are going to be better in the long run, but it, time and time again, it shows that it's not true. Uh, you know, we're, we're around the same age and I can remember people saying, go to college, go to college, right. go to college. And I think that mentality is actually driven um, a lot of people out of the trades. And now we have this huge gap. We yeah. have all these, we, we have this space where we need uh, a lot of people to do this work and not a lot of people who know how to do it. And not a lot of people with a lot of experience in it. And so, um, it's almost a deficit and it's, it's not helping our society. We, we need people who are going to come back and work in America and make American made products. Right. And, uh, and I think that's what you guys are doing over there. Not only have you, uh, helped teach the next generation how to do it, you've been out doing it. So there's, uh, there's that gap. And, and we were talking a little bit before we got on camera here about, I think there has been a little bit of a shift in, you know, how people view what people used to view as, you know, factory work or welding work or, or that kind of stuff to, um, I think it's become a lot more of a respectable profession within our culture and community. It probably should have always been, but we're starting to see a little bit more people come around. Um, is that something you're seeing with the young kids coming in that they're, they're viewing it that way or? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, if people are finally seeing that the trades is not a bad thing. It's not the old dusty, gloomy, look of the 50s and 60s that is actually you know things a lot healthier nowadays um the pay is great in most situations um and everybody's trying to make you know things come back to america right you know american made and uh the only way to do that is for people to go out and work in the industries right 
Yeah. So do you think that's going to be the, the future of where we see things going? Do you think we're going to see some more, uh, still see an, a need, a demand for skilled trade laborers? I definitely think so, especially, you know, every year more and more baby boomers are retiring and leaving the leaving the area. You know, they might go down to Florida or something. But right. um, we definitely need people to fill those spots. I mean, it started whenever I got out of high school and started working. You know, you could see the the, the older generation guys, they were, they'd go in flocks of 10 or 15 a year retiring. Yeah. And I'm sure it's still, still like that. You know, you might have guys that are 60 and 70 years old retiring. Um, it's those crew of guys that have been working together almost their whole, their whole career. And yep. one of them goes, they're about all ready to go. And yep. man, I, I, I can only imagine that's not only a, a big gap in the, in the, uh, actual workforce but a gap in the knowledge that those guys have built over the years and right these younger people being able to get in why those people are still there and, and gain as much as they can you know that's another thing that's really interesting about the trades that um you can learn a lot of basic skills when you're in school but once you get on the job site like you're saying that's yeah. a continual education that you're getting paid for that your, your employer is like yeah no i want you to learn more and be better at your trade they're willing to help Right. Basically take another person who's been there for a long time and say, mentor this young person because they know it's good for them. Instead of you paying for that education, your right. employers yep. helping pay for it by uh, continuing to help you along. So I know that's encouraged in our shop for our, the older guys to help the, the new people coming in to get them along because that's, that's just better for everybody in the long run. Right. So, so, you know, one of the things we always talk about is the, the health and uh shop environment and uh you know we build dust collectors here but i mean i'm sure you're probably seeing hopefully there's less of a concern from young people coming into the trades that you know there is a better healthier environment for them to go work in and um as is that is that a concern people are still having or do you see that's kind of something that may be going away with um new? i think there's still are, especially with welding i think there are still the concerns and oh you're breathing and all this and that but those are the people that have never stepped in a shop before, especially a newer age shop. You know, it's not, it's not like it was back in the fifties or sixties right. where you walk into a, into a building and you can't see the other end of it. Right. You know, there, there's so much more technology and, um, smoke suckers and, um, respirators and that now everything's right. been upgraded so much. And really if you wear all your PPE, very minimal health concerns. So if there's a young person out there listening to this or their parents listen to this and they're, they're a little bit hesitant about their, their kid getting into the trades because of health hazards, I think, like you said, I think we're getting better at that every day. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everything's, yeah. everything's advanced so much. Right. Even since I've been in the shop working, I mean, things have just been crazy how, how they're advancing. Right. Right. So, well, just as a closing, uh, thought here do you, do you have anything else if someone's out there listening to to this and they're thinking about getting into the trades or getting into welding what would be some words of encouragement or, or anything you'd want to say to them as they're trying to weigh what they should do with their future um i think that anybody that's on the fence of going to like a votech or a trade school or staying in their home school think about the long run and don't think about i mean you're gonna have to make some sacrifices obviously with you know, you might not be able to do choir or you not, might not be able to do band mm -hmm. or something like that. But think of it in the long run about what you can better do for yourself. I mean, you have the opportunity of a free education for a two or three year program through a VOTEC that if you graduated and took the same type of program, like a year and a half program right. in a, like a satellite trade school somewhere, you're looking at $20,000 at least. Right. So... I mean, $20,000 compared to maybe changing a couple classes or doing something different in high school to better look into your future. Right. To me, that's a definite, you know, benefit. To be able to come out of your high school career debt-free with a skill under your belt, ready to make some money and, and right. walk right into it. That is, uh, that's a big leg up these days. Yes. So... Well, hey, thanks for coming yeah. coming on. We appreciate no you problem. taking a minute. We appreciate all the students you've taught over the last couple of years and all the great work they do here. Um, so if you uh, are out there listening, we just want to say uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. 
Thanks for listening to the Dusty Jobs Podcast. Breathe better, work safer.